all aboard the Moscow to Peskov Overnight Express. Vodka. Russia's wonderful and most favorite drink. It's a long way to Peskov, 12 hours, and there's not very much to do. And to while through the night, I do what lots of Russians do. I play, we chess. Yeah, I play chess, yeah, yeah. Shutka, whatever it's called. I love Russia, and I love people here. Hi, chaps. Can I play? I love their sense of humor, I love their sense of irony. Vodka, vodka. Vodka, vodka. Come on, come on. Yeah, well, let's make it a party, huh? Let's go, let's go, let's go. For the rest of the world. For Russia. Russian drink. Russian um, drink. How do you call it? I don't know. I'm not drunk. I'm Russian. There's a lot of people. We're going to have some more vodka. I'm very happy to drink uh, any amount of vodka and to see how pissed I get, whatever. Um, because I can um, uh, do that. But also, there's a point at which I want to know, if I'm drinking a bottle of vodka, is it a straight bottle of vodka? Is it going to wreck me or is it just going to um, give me a mild headache? And that's an important thing. Hangovers for a drunken fool are one thing. Dying is quite another. As many as 10,000 Russians have been hospitalized and 500 killed by a plague of poison alcohol. Their livers pack up, they go bile yellow and die a horrible death. And the cause? It's a complete mystery. I played a good move there, by the way, everybody. The BBC have sent me to Peskov to investigate. I wonder why they've picked on me for this particular assignment. I need more vodka. In England, you're not allowed to take other people's queens away. Excuse me. <laughs> take that on, <old> Russie. <laughs> President Vladimir Putin says vodka is bad. Vodka, no, yet. These old Stalinist boasters. Nyet, 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 nyet. The Russian state and vodka don't mix. The Kremlin has, down the years, passed laws banning it. Tsar Nicholas II, Lenin and Gorbachev all had a go at bottling up Russia's thirst. Now President Vladimir Putin, himself something of a Puritan, is trying to cut down on Russia's drinking habit. Under Putin, the tax on vodka has tripled, making it a pleasure affordable to the wealthy classes alone. Ordinary Russians have turned to cheap but dodgy alternatives. Industrial alcohol, window cleaning fluid, de-icer, medical disinfectant. None of them do you any good. В России только от отравления алкоголем и прежде всего его суррогатами ежегодно умирает около 40 тысяч человек. Однако эту проблему невозможно решить методом запретов. Каждый молодой человек должен осознать, что здоровый образ жизни – это успех, его личный успех. Это 7.30 утра. 
and I feel as though I've had enough to drink to kill a small horse. Peskov is at the far western edge of Russia and badly affected by the Yellow Death. More than a thousand people poisoned, 120 dead. Last September, the Peskov region declared a state of emergency. Their first move was to commandeer three of the city's hospitals to cope with the outbreak of mass poisonings. At the height of the crisis, a dozen new patients a day were admitted with a fatal liver disease, toxic hepatitis. What did you have to drink to cause you to go yellow? Oh, vodka from a shop. How much did you have to drink? Just small glasses, 25 grams. The first two, I didn't notice anything. Then I began to taste a sourness. All these people have drunk surrogate alcohol, bought not in shops but on the black market, in the guise of vodka or spirit. So how come you ended up so yellow? What, what did you drink? I don't know. It came in a plastic bottle. Did it smell of chemicals or anything, industrial spirit? I didn't smell it. If I'd sensed it was something unpleasant, I'd have thrown it up. It would have been better to throw it away and not drink it at all. Yes, problem, I believe you. It's a mystery. For the seriously affected patients, the ones whose livers are virtually packed up, what's going to happen to them? We predict that it will lead to a chronic illness of the liver in those who have turned yellow. It's highly likely it will develop into cirrhosis. It is compounded by the kidneys ceasing to function and also by infections like pneumonia. It's a combination of those three things that kills them. We just heard there's been a new admission, um, a woman and um, apparently she looks to be in a bad way. Hello. Hi. Sugar again. John. Can you tell me what happened? What did you have to drink? I drank some spirit. I bought it from this friend before. She'd been selling it for ages. Nothing like this ever happened before. And did you drink a lot of it? About half a bottle. But the doctor told me a glass is enough to poison you. Why didn't you buy vodka? Vodka is three times more expensive and difficult to get hold of. You can buy spirit any time, day or night. So you're a granny. When did you first notice that Natasha's face was going yellow? She'd been drinking with her girlfriends. I was angry with her. She shouldn't drink. She's got bad kidneys. I pity her. She's got a boy, her little son. We're all hoping for the best. Russia boasts, some say, 25 million alcoholics. Most are poor, working class men. But that's a huge thirst, and the profits for the unscrupulous are big. 
They've drunk homemade vodka or moonshine called Samagon for centuries, and they haven't been going yellow. So the poison must be something else, most likely one of the ultra-cheap industrial alcohols favoured by the serious drinkers. To crack this, I needed to get my hands on a bottle. So I turned to a local journalist who knew someone with a taste for the hard stuff. Let me introduce my, uh, Hi. My, my new friend, John. He's a journalist from uh, BBC Television. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Come on, let's sit down. Please. Cheers. Please. Oh, what's this? I, I speak English, but not very well. What is this? This is... Bayarishnik uh... Berry. Right, 70%. 70%. What is it? Применяют. В комплексной терапии функциональных расстройств сердечной деятельности, в кардиологии, климактерическом синдроме, астеневротических состояний. In Pskov, this uh, named cognac apteka. Okay, the, the, uh, the, the brandy from the pharmacy. Let's have a sniff. Crazy, man. Is there some, is there some stuff there, or what? What do you do with the apple? <laughs> what do you do with the apple? Apple, yeah. You eat the apple, or you have this and then the apple, or what? Yes, I don't really, yes. This is your only apple. If you want it. Чего не сделаешь, кстати, журналистики, да? It's all right. <laughs> Very good. Будем. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I needed the apple. There we go. Ah, that's better. The camera is there. So be gentle with it, yeah? Yeah, let's go do it. We're happy to do this, Korosho? Best wishes. Okay. Best wishes, indeed. The increased taxes mean that street alcohol is now a third of the price of the cheapest vodka. That's why the black market is so big. The trade in illegal alcohol seems dead by day. But what about at night? It's a sale, and Alexei was keen to carry out on-the-spot tasting, without fussing over much about what might be in it. He seemed sure it was pure moonshine, with no added poison. This is normal, let's have a go. This is summer gone. It's all right, it's better than the Hawthorn. Now that I'd taken a swig, Alexei was having second thoughts about what I'd just drunk. This isn't toxic. Samagon is OK, but industrial spirit may be poisoned. That's industrial spirit. Um, it's a little bit chemical. Um, and to be frank, you don't know what you're drinking. It could be moonshine and industrial spirit. That's what the... Um, 
oh, the taxi driver thinks it is. Um, in which case, this is dangerous stuff. Problem is, you've got no idea. It could be. Uh, it's a kind of liquid Russian roulette. I had promised Natasha, the poison victim I'd met in the hospital, that I'd visit her granny in Russian babushka and her little boy, Maxim. Then. Natasha was no whiner. She didn't have much money, but she didn't share the usual characteristics of the other poison victims. <laughs> You must be um you must be worried about your mum. Would you like to go and see your mum now? Yeah. Okay, let's go. Babushka had brought up Natasha on her own since her mum and dad were killed in a car crash when she was only seven years old. It's possible that these dreadful circumstances could be repeated with Babushka bringing up Maxim on her own. He too is seven. Natasha, you seem better today. Are you, are you feeling more lively? I don't know how I look. I feel the same. Not good. No one said anything. The doctor hasn't been once. So you've got no idea what the prognosis is for you? No, no one's got a bloody clue about the illness or how to treat it. All anyone asks about is what we drank and where we bought it. So, Doctor, what's the name of this chemical that's turned everybody yellow? At last, something concrete to go on. Polyhexo. Polyhexo. The hospital had identified the chemical compound they suspected was the poison. Chloride. Polyhexomethylene guanidino hydrochlorate. Now, that doesn't sound like a nice cup of tea at all. Since people started turning yellow, Peskov's bootleggers have been targeted by a police operation, codename Alcohol. We're going on a police raid. They've got a location where they believe this alcohol is being sold. And they've got a, a guy here who's going to try and buy some. When he comes out, they'll have the evidence. Oops. And um, they'll be able to nail somebody. Peskov police don't mess about. Despite there being no sale, they decided to sweep anyway. They tell me that the householder was a known criminal who'd formed for selling moonshine. 
Я уже давно не торгую. Как уже штраф пришел, штраф упал. Ой, даже не могу. Я не переживайте. Где торгуют, и скажите, мы съездим туда. Не знаю. Вот он седьмая на вызывает на меня, а вы лучше их проверьте. Вот так. А я то что торгую, что ли, что ко мне пришли? Ну, мне просто адрес сказали, что он сходи. Ну, ну, вот кто вам адрес сказал, пусть тот и дает вам. Я ну, вообще не торгую. Не я не торгую. Да, собака. Это тоже сложность, когда собака. She had a dog, so we've decided to um, beat a tactical retreat, run away. Ира, Ира, Ира. Нет, я не торгую. Бра, ты не подскажешь, у кого? Не знаю я, сейчас никто не торгует. Сейчас Вообще? Сейчас никто пожелтели. О, блядь. Full freight. Can't find the house. Девчонки, простите, ну, блядь. Грубо говоря, не могу, ну дайте похмелиться. Ну за деньги, конечно. Мы да, пока мы принимать не будем, пока мы с мы не разорвем. Долго ждать, ну девки, ну сдох, Нет. Ну, а? Слушай, уйди, а. Уйди. Не мешай работать. Ну, долго ждать, нет, скажите. Как бы да, полчаса. Полчаса и ждите. The lieutenant and his men weren't going to be kept waiting for half an hour. They pounced. This time more confident. Ну, сынок, коробки там, с посудой. This is a bottle exchange. People without much money come here and hand over beer bottles, whatever, and get a few pennies on it. That's the stuff, yeah? Well, there's spirit of civilization as it is. Oh. Then you will have to pay for it. And if you don't pay for it, you will be put in jail immediately. You will have to pay for it. We will pay for it. Oh, God, it smells so chemical. Let's try it. Some of this stuff turns people yellow, then they die. Why have you been selling it? No, it's not. Why are you selling it? Crashed spirit. А это yeah. Сэм. От oh, самогона желтый не будет. Это спирт. Технически всякие там, которыми стекла чистит, там т.д. и т.п. Вот это, например, я продаю, да, 25 рублей. А спирт продавали по 20 рублей. Он намного дешевле. Поэтому пили спирт и умирали. None of the people busted were anything close to being major criminals. More Mrs. Mop than Mr. Big. I went to see Peskov's chief of police, General Sergei Matveyev. I wanted to ask him whether his men were arresting the wrong people. None of those people have actually added uh, the poison into the industrial alcohol. Is that correct? All the people arrested here just stored or distributed the spirit. The confiscated spirit is sent for analysis to St. Petersburg. But we're still waiting for the scientists to arrive at their conclusions. I knew the general wasn't telling me the whole truth, as the doctor had already given me the name of the prime suspect. I understand that you have identified this poison and it's called polyhexomethylene guanadinohydrochlorate. Да, есть такая информация, что первоначальное, значит, Yes. The initial results suggested that might be the case. Речь идёт именно об этом. Have you arrested anyone for putting this stuff into alcohol? Нет, не арестовали. Дело в том, что по нашей информации весь все отравление. No, according to our information, the spirit wasn't made in our region. Сюда в область поступил и добавки вот этой жидкости. The preparation happened elsewhere. Изготовления были в других регионах. Getting information out of the general was like getting blood out of a stone. If I was going to get on the trail of the polyhexo, I was going to have to do it by myself. Natasha, where do you buy your stuff from? Can you tell me? 
I bought it in my area, not far from my house. There's a shop called Teremok. Behind it, there's a two-story red brick building. That's where I got it. What's their address precisely, so we can go find it later? Can you tell it to us? <laughs> 8 Metalistov Street. So the address is 8 Metalista Street. Yeah. This is Metalistov, yeah? No. Okay. Which is the block flats we're going to go to? Um, do we know at all? What, what, what? This one here. What, yeah. oh, I see. Have we bought before here? <coughs> Have we been here before? We just bought a ranch. Da, da, da. It's, exa we, it's exactly where we bought before, yeah? Hold on a second, crikey. I've already drunk moonshine, summer gun, which we bought from here. It's the same source as the one Natasha used, which was poisoned. So I might... I might have drunk the poison vodka too. Shit. I may turn yellow and have suffered serious liver damage. It smells very, very chemically. I'm not drinking it, I'll tell you that. I want to know whether I've poisoned myself. To get the latest intelligence on the poison alcohol, I went to see Peskov's public health officer, Sergei Nikiforov. If anyone knows what the source of the polyhexo is and what drinking even a few sips can do to you, it'll be him. Polyhexamethylene guanidine hydrochlorate. Toxicologists believe that this substance may cause liver damage. It was in a disinfectant, extracept. It should be used in hospitals to sterilize equipment, walls and tiles. It's produced as a medical disinfectant, which means the producers avoid paying the alcohol tax. Does that mean that the producers of Exocept are also, in some sense, responsible for these deaths, these poisonings? I cannot imagine they were unaware that so much of their product was not needed. And personally, I am sure that they knew where this product was going. I may have drunk some of this stuff, just not much, um, a taste of it, a sip. What could it do to me? I've talked to toxicologists and they said a lot depends on the state of the liver when the person drinks the spirit. So if it's already had long-term exposure to high doses of alcohol, then the person will fall ill sooner 
and the consequences will be much more severe. The uncertainty of not knowing whether I'd poisoned myself made the five-hour journey to St. Petersburg unbearable. There, they could test the industrial spirit I'd drunk and tell me more about polyhexa. So here we are at last, Institute of Toxicology. If you want to know about poisons, you come to this place. Toxicology tests on the alcohol confiscated by police in Peskov were still going on. But initial results here at the lab were anything but conclusive. Polyhexomethyl guanidine, during quite long-term toxicological examination, was found to have no toxic effect on the liver. How is it turning people yellow then? It may be the result of the combined action of the composition as a whole. In this case, we're examining the composition of extracept, which is the ethyl alcohol, diethyl phthalate, and polyhexamethyl guanidine. So my friend polyhexo is not guilty on its own. But extracept is a blend of chemicals, 95% alcohol, plus the polyhexo stuff, and a third compound, diethyl folate. Perhaps a synergetic cocktail effect is the cause of the yellow death. I was wondering whether you could do me a favor. It's just off. Could you analyze this for me? Russia is rough on its people, and rough on its rats too. Some of these poor little creatures are being fed extracept in the hope that they will confirm the poison cocktail hypothesis. For four weeks, they both received alcohol to cause liver damage. Now we're injecting them with alcohol or extracept to see which affects them worse. I know this isn't scientific, but these rats look the least well of all of them. They look pretty far gone. When the extracept ones die, they have cirrhosis of the liver, kidney, and stomach damage. But the alcohol ones are different. They die from respiratory and cardiac problems. So if the extracept is rotting the rats from the inside out, I was rather hoping there wasn't any extracept inside me. So what's the news? You've got the analysis back on that moonshine I drank. Extracept contains chloride ion. That's why the test on the presence of chloride ions is the uh, most simple test. Mm -hmm. This is extracept. Right. And this is your sample. Yes. And this is clean. This is clean. It means I'm clean. It means that uh, this sample does not contain chloride ion and sen uh, and hence uh, polyhexamethylenguanidine hydrochloride. Ha 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 ha. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you very much. I can drink some more of it then. <laughs> Back in Peskov, the cops on Operation Codename Alcohol have received some hot information and are planning a night raid. <laughs> I couldn't resist tagging along. Wow. We're looking at two enormous vats of hooch. The guy in the vest with his um, fingers in front of his face is a moonshine maker. Now, there is nothing terribly wrong about making this. Here's the problem. Moonshine on its own, not a big thing, but the moonshine with the industrial spirit and the poison causes the yellow death. 
is there anything you'd like to tell me about this uh, in, in your defense? My guess is this is only moonshine, yeah? It, it looks as though you've been nicked, mate, though, doesn't it? You've got two huge barrels full of moonshine. Okay. Right, okay, I think it's polite for you to go first. Cheers. <laughs> if you poison me, I will be very cross. If I turn yellow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Baldy may have been caught red-handed making hooch, but there was no sign of extracept, nor that he was living a life of luxury. I'm always up for helping out the constabulary, especially when one picks up the latest on how the criminal investigation is going. The cops had a new lead potentially the primary source of the killer alcohol. But would the general spill the beans? According to my information, the factory has been identified, but the information is confidential and I can't share it with you. Are you happy that you're not allowed to tell me or the public that you know the factory where this comes from, but it's a, some kind of secret? Is that right? The investigation into this factory is ongoing, but eventually the public will be told. The general may have decided to end the interview there, but seeing as we'd hit it off so well, I just wanted to ask one last question. Do you know the name of the... Can you tell us the name of the factory? But it's in Moscow? It's close to Moscow. People say it's in the Vladimir region. Right, the Vladimir region. There's a big spirit factory where they've started to produce this poisonous alcohol. Vladimirov, five hours through the night from Peskov. Pajalsta, good year. Kim Zabod. Kimi Zabod. Okay, smash it. Thank you. So this is it. This is the factory from where the alcohol came, the extracept. There is smoke coming from one chimney, so clearly there's still some activity. If this is the poison factory, then it didn't look ever so welcoming. I decided to make friends with the local mayor. Maybe he could get me inside the factory. John Sweeney, hello. Good morning. Good morning. John Sweeney, BBC. Hi. Hello. Nice to Thank you. We've come here because we've heard um, that this factory is the source of the alcohol that's poisoned people, that's made this extra sap stuff. We'd very much like to uh, see them. We're going to the factory at last. The factory was in mothballs, but there were thousands of bottles of Extracept waiting for a market. The makers of Extracept stood to do well out of a law change a year ago. It made alcohol for medical uses tax exempt. Each one is a ex Extracept. Suddenly they had a product which, to the bootleggers, was worth its weight in gold. The market grew and Extracept's makers made a cling. You're the technical director. Hello. Hi. Uh, John Sweeney from the BBC. Good. Thank you.
What's this then? It's extracept, a disinfectant. Uh, I'm afraid I don't speak good enough Russian. Does it say that it's um, poison anywhere? It's not written here that it's a poison, because it's not a poison. It just says not for internal consumption. A normal person wouldn't drink it. It's only drunk by morally degraded people. Let's talk about morally degraded people, shall we? People have a right to choose what they drink, but it should be an informed choice. I don't think that if you look at this bottle, you've got an informed choice. You don't realise that it could turn you yellow. You don't realise that it contains something which the toxicologists now fear is a mortal poison. That's why your factory has been closed, isn't it? The factory has not been closed. We've temporarily halted production. We need to find out why people are being poisoned and if our product is to blame. No one, including you, has proof that people are turning yellow or dying because of extracept. Okay, so. It doesn't say poison on it, and it's 95% industrial alcohol spirit. So let's drink it. Will you drink it with me? No. Why not? No. Come on, cheers. <laughs> Go and drink it with me. <laughs> I'm not going to, but be my guest. <laughs> why, 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 why aren't you going to drink it? Why not? Yeah. Why, why aren't you going to drink it? <laughs> Don't provoke me. I'm not going to drink it. It's not meant for internal consumption. Smell it. The reason you don't want to drink it is it'll turn you yellow. Mm, yes. No, I know I won't turn yellow. Well, then drink it. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> you drink some. Are you worried that you might end up like one of the morally degraded and turn yellow? No, I'm not worried. Uh, for a start, I didn't drink too much, and we have proof that this product is not harmful if taken in small doses. No one at the Exocept factory has been charged with any offence. The only people who may end up in trouble are the big bootleggers who bought Exocept wholesale off the factory and sold it on as drinkable alcohol. But how many of them are behind bars? But have you got anybody who's made a lot of money out of this business? The big fish. It's hard to find anyone who brought it here and distributed it. I can't tell you who they are because they're mainly outsiders from other towns and regions. It's obvious that we need to trace these people, the distributors, and through them to reveal the pyramid, where it originates. We say in Britain it's the big fish that always get away. It's a good saying in Russia too. The news has come through from the toxicology lab. They've concluded that for people with already damaged livers, the polyhexo stuff plus the diethylphalate made extracept a killer cocktail. What's so astonishing is that with thousands poisoned and many hundreds dead, no one with real responsibility not the lawmakers, not the bootleggers, nor the people behind Extracept. None of them have been called to account. There was one last thing left unresolved. So you've examined Natasha. What are your conclusions? It's a serious form of toxic hepatitis. 
Liver function has suffered greatly. The threat to her life remains. It's entirely possible treatment won't work and she'll deteriorate. Well, she's 30. What do you think the more likely life expectancy is? It's hard to say how long she'll live. It's quite possible she'll die within a year. Not immediately, but as the result of chronic liver failure. Is there anything you can do to save her? We could perform a liver transplant, but it would be unlikely to work because of the state of the other organs. Natasha, it's wholly possible that no one will ever go to jail on this because it doesn't look as though the producers have broken the law. Who's guilty? No one has answered that. Who's to blame? Nobody. Well, no one in particular. In Russia, no one's ever been able to answer the question, who's to blame? I don't think anyone ever will. After filming in Russia, we took back samples of Samagon and Exocept to Britain and our scientists at a university in London to test them on human liver cells. Ordinary vodka and Samagon had little effect. The Extracept, however, had a massive impact, wiping out virtually all the human liver cells. The Extracept factory is seeking to develop new products. For more information on tonight's programme, or to watch it again, you can visit our website on bbc.co.uk slash thisworld. If you'd like to be reminded about forthcoming This World programmes, text This World to 81010 to receive our free text alert service.